Hi friends, today I'm going to discuss about why tap cell connection is required in substation battery bank. This is not too much required for the students, but the people those who are engaged in substations and power stations, they will be requiring it the most. To start with, why battery bank is required in a substation? In a substation, battery banks are required for the control of the operating equipments like relay, circuit breaker, isolator and many more. And there are different set of battery banks also available in substations for the communication systems. In a battery or a battery bank, generally we know there are two terminals, one is positive and other one is negative. But in a substation what we observe, there are three connections given to a battery which is coming from charger. So why this third connection is used, the battery and how it is used and how it is connected that we will see and discuss. From the block diagram, it can be observed that an AC source is connected as input to the charger and the output of the charger is connected to batteries as well as the relays and circuit breakers which are considered as the DC loads for substation. So how all these equipments and the accessories are connected in a substation, let us see. The first equipment here shown is an AC source which is given as input to the charger. Then we come to the battery bank. The battery bank is connected to the output of the charger and then other output is connected to the load that is relay and circuit breakers. Now we can see the circuit breakers and the relays are given two inputs as positive and negative but the connection given to batteries are three. The top one which is positive connection then the lower one is negative connection and in between there is another connection which is given to the battery and that connection is used as tap cell connection. Why this tap cell is connected that we will discuss. This is how the cell of a battery looks like. When a number of cells are connected in series to increase the voltage, the battery looks like this. If we show it in a diagram, then it looks like this and symbolically battery is shown like this. So what is there inside a charger? If you consider this whole one, it's a charger. Inside the charger there is a rectifier with filter circuit. The output of the rectifier is positive. The input of the rectifier is AC. And the output of the rectifier is DC. So this is the positive terminal of the rectifier and this is the negative terminal of the rectifier. So here you can see the battery and the load. Both are directly connected to the output of the charger. This output of the rectifier is directly connected to a diode which is in forward bias direction. This diode is used to block the flow of current from the battery to towards the charger when there will not be AC supply. There are two modes of charging in rectifier. First the float mode and the boost mode. If you consider a nominal voltage of the battery is 110 volt. Then in float mode the output voltage of the, rectif the charger is 120 volt around. So the charging of the battery in float mode will be above 110 and it will be up to a maximum of 120 volt. But charger with boost mode charging, the scenario goes different. When the battery voltage that is 110 volt goes below 90 percent of 110 volt, the charger goes to boost mode. With boost mode on, the terminal voltage of the charger that is here, we 
shall get a voltage of around 150 volt so as the load is also connected across the terminals of the charger we may get a high voltage across the load during boost charging but with boost charging there is a contractor associated with boost charging disconnected here so with boost mode on this contacts get open so by opening this contact the load start getting voltage from this step cell so during boost charge also the load will get only a voltage of around 120 volt only so that will protect the load from getting a higher voltage of 150 volt again after the battery attains a voltage more than 90% of its nominal voltage that is 110 volt <coughs> the charger again comes to float mode float mode then with float mode the contactor available here again gets closed so with this contactor getting closed this potential becomes higher as this is connected to a lower terminal of the battery so this potential is lower there is no chance of a current flowing from this side to this side so when the rectifier or the charger will be in float mode that time the load shall get a voltage from this point that is the nominal voltage that is around 110 volt or more than that so with float mode on the load shall get a voltage of the full battery voltage with this contactor closed and with boost mode on this contactor will get open and the load will get a voltage from a lower potential of the battery and it will come through the tap cell to its load hence it is clear that the tap cell connection in batteries are done to protect the DC loads that is relays circuit breakers and any other DC circuit coils from over voltages when the battery charger goes to boost mode friends if you like the video please like share and comment and also don't forget to subscribe the channel